Hey guys, coming at you live from Mozambique. Just wanted to do a quick chat on hearing the voice of God. This seems to be a topic that everybody is wanting um, to jump into right now. So if you're just joining us, we're going to chit chat about hearing the voice of God in our lives and maybe I can share a couple of fun and maybe different ways that you can hear God to encourage you. But during this conversation, um, I'd love for you guys to jump in too and, uh, and chat. Jim O'Reilly, what's up man? Good to see you. And uh, as, as we chat about it, feel free to put in your comments about how, how you hear from God and what works for you and how you've grown in that. All right, so we're going to just jump into it, hearing the voice of God and fun ways to do that, except I'm going to have you wait a little bit longer till I jump into those one or two fun ways that have worked for me. And I just want to just press into the topic of hearing God real quick. Why did I jump on here to talk about this? Well, a few, maybe a month or two ago, I shot out a message that said, hey, mom and dad, I shot out a message that, that asked you guys, would you rather talk about hearing the voice of God, dreams and visions, or um, calling versus gifting on your life? Amy Van Rylin and what's up, girl? And um, a lot of you said all three topics would be great, but of the three, the most desired topic was hearing the voice of God. What's up, girl? I think that we could all agree that, especially right now in people's lives, it's probably the number one topic. For people that actually desire God in their life, or desire a spiritual life, or um, have, have been in a relationship with God, or Christ, or the Holy Spirit for a while, and feel dry, or whatever, it's like, um, especially for those who are following Christ, there's a longing for us to be face-to-face -face with Him. So, the desire to hear his voice is always going to be there. Always. So let me just encourage you with that. But as we chit chat, not for a long time tonight, I just wanted to have a little bit of a chat session because I think I have a couple of things that will encourage your heart today. As I went running today, I thought of it and thought I'd jump on here. So hearing God. First things first, I want to encourage you guys that hearing the voice of God in your life is one, you're capable of it. Um, you have the ability to. God positioned you with the ability to. There is no reason why our Father in Heaven would give us the ability to hear our parents, to hear our neighbors, to hear our friends, and not hear Him. One of the greatest uh, deceptions amongst the Islam church here, just in Mozambique, but in general, is that they can't hear the voice of God, and that other people have to hear it for them. And I think what's happened in the first world is we've allowed others to hear and form. We know that we can hear the voice of God, but we've either gotten lazy, distracted, um, and I'm not here to rebuke us, but I'm just throwing those out, those truths out there. And so we've allowed others to hear the voice of God for us. Whereas in the third world, especially in the Islamic world, many of them don't think they can hear the voice of God. They come under a shayhe, hey, they come under an imam, and they think that they're supposed to be heard through a prophet's voice. However, we have the ability to hear God. And so let's jump into this. So if we're not hearing God, why aren't we hearing God? All right? The first thing I would tell you is hearing God takes practice. It takes training. It takes um, walking through practice. All right? Let me give you guys an example. It said, um, I saw Jimmy O'Reilly on here. He knows my past with sports and things like that and with business and and uh, this is this is one that crosses over the business world too. It was it said that the, the the line between professional sports and Olympics is a razor's edge, and that the line between professional and and intermediate or almost professional is actually fairly big. But that the professional status person has done their trade or whatever their gifting is at least 10,000 times, whereas an Olympic athlete's done even more. Now, when I used to coach baseball, one of the things I used to coach my kids was something that my coach, who was an amazing coach, taught me, which was the phrase, practice makes permanent. 
Practice does not make perfect. That's what we keep hearing as kids, but it's not true. Practice makes permanent. It makes permanently bad or it makes permanently good. All right. If I'm practicing the wrong habits over and over and over, like eating, the result isn't perfection unless what I'm looking for is obesity. Then it's perfection. If, if not eating, right, practice doesn't make perfect because then I starve to death. Practice makes permanent. And what you practice, what you train in, is what permanently is ingrained. So how did the professional Olympics get to where they are? How did I get good at baseball? I had to practice 10,000 times at something. But here's the thing. I had to practice well 10,000 times. So for instance, let's take a soccer player. There's a certain system to utilize your hips and your foot right when you kick a soccer ball. So when I approach a soccer ball, there's a system. When I step next to the soccer ball, there's a system. When I kick the ball, there's a system. When I follow through, there's a system. If any one of those points is incorrect, I'm going to make a permanent bad habit out of something. Now, if I get three of the four steps right, then I'm growing towards a professional and an Olympic level in that area. But for the full kick and follow through, I'm missing something, all right? Um, same with CrossFit, same with writing, same with carpentry, same with reading, same with songwriting, all right? If I practice, um, if I practice shooting free throws, right? If I practice driving a car, if I permanently practice pulling to the right by two inches, I am going to end up in a light post, whether I like it or not. My practice made perfect for a head-on collision. But if I practice keeping the wheels straight, whether I'm in chaos, stress, traffic, I have permanently fixed my truck in a straight line. All right, why does that matter? Well, for a professional sport, that could take weeks, months, years. But let's just take something as simple as hearing. Let's take something as simple as a baby walking, all right? How many of you guys, I'm a big fitness buff, how many of you guys have had the watches with the, with the steps on it, right? I try to aim for like 10,000 steps a day. That's actually not that hard if you consistently walk, if you consistently do something on your feet. And by the way, at any time, you guys jump in here, say if this has encouraged you. If you have a question, we'll pause for a second and say it, and I will get to those fun and interesting different ways of hearing the voice of God but I want to lay the foundation. So let's take a baby. When a baby gets up and stands, right, and then begins to walk, he walks a couple steps and falls, walks a couple steps and falls, all right? But he doesn't walk a couple steps and stop. He doesn't wait a week. Okay, I've done it once, so I can just chill out now. Now I'm a walker. No, that means next week when he goes to walk, he'll fall again. Let me tell you why this makes sense in the professional and the, the, the Olympic type mindset of hearing God. Do you know that right now, if you're an adult and you're walking every day, you are at the Olympic level of walking every day. Did you know you're an Olympian athlete in walking? I was thinking about this. I, was, I just went running and had this thought and then took a shower and I was thinking, I was like, whoa, we're all Olympic athletes in walking if we're adults, right? How long has it been since you tripped and fell when you were just walking every day? 10,000 steps, 5,000 steps, 20,000 steps. Some of you guys in here are probably like, I fall all the time. Well, that's just because maybe you've created a bad habit and you're an Olympic athlete and being clumsy. I'm sorry, but i uh, just joking. But most of us, you don't have to think about tripping. It doesn't happen very often. Like, that's why it's so funny when someone does because you've... You're an Olympic athlete by the time you're 12 at walking, right? Most children, by the time they're six, seven, eight, don't stumble very often. And if they do, it's because their body, they're just not used to, to balancing at certain levels. But most of the time, by the time you're five, six, seven, you're walking at an Olympic level already. Why? Because you've done 10,000 repetitions of it right, right? So back to the soccer thing. If I practice 
perfectly and permanently kicking the ball into the goal properly from a distance of 20 feet. All right? Every four kick, if I'm kicking it in properly, that rep doesn't count. So it's 10,000 repetitions of permanently good practice. All right? What's up, my best friend, Jory? Jory loves his talk too, pride. So let's type this to hearing God, all right? Real quickly. If I'm at an Olympic level athlete in walking, all right, we could be at hearing as well, right? Kids do not need to retrain themselves in hearing their mom's voice. They could hear their mom's voice in a crowd in a moment at any second. Why? Because they've heard it thousands of times. Kids, pick up your room. Kids, come upstairs. Ian, go out and chop some wood. That was in Alaska. Kids, close the lights off. Kids, shut the door. They've heard their mom's voice so many times that they are perfect at hearing her voice. They know her voice. All right? So let's take that to hearing God. The foundation is first. We have to practice. We have to train our self permanently. But here's the trick. How are you permanently practicing? Are you training yourself like this? Oh, God, you said to go outside? Okay. And then, do you go outside and then ignore him the rest of the day? Or do you finish the conversation? Hey, Ian, stop playing Nintendo. Go read your Bible. Okay, so I go read my Bible. And then do I stop the conversation? Okay, um... Ian, go call your best friend, Jory. Okay. Now, what if I wait till 5 o'clock to call him? What if God meant for me to call him right then? If I'm not training myself permanently in the right habit, I'm not going to get the repetitions needed in my soul, let alone my spirit, to be able to hear the voice of God. All right? So why are you saying all this, Ian? Because I have a fun and a different way for you to hear from the Lord. A couple of them. Over the years, you guys know that this is one of my favorite things to talk about. Samurai! Hey, so right now, there's a guy named Samurai from Mozambique. He's one of our disciples. Maybe you've met him. He's in Nampula at his YWAM DTS right now. He's on a break from his months and months lately of learning to hear the voice of God. And he wants to hear the voice of God more. Well, no wonder Samurai is hearing the voice of God really well. He's practicing. Love you, brother. Can't wait to see you in a month, man. So, how about for you guys? What thoughts do you have on that? What is that trigger in you, me just laying the foundation of how do I hear the voice of God? While you guys answer that, I'm going to give you a little bit of a rhythm of what I do. And then we're going to talk about one or two fun ways that you could hear from God. All right? But first, answer this question. How does that trigger you? How does that make you feel? Do you immediately go to shame? Like, oh man, I haven't been talking with him enough. Or do you think, oh, that's kind of interesting. You're right. Like, I've walked five million times. I've taken five million steps, and so I can walk really well. I should be able to hear God's voice too. What does that do for you when I lay that foundation of hearing God in just simplicity of repetition? All right? While you're answering that, one of the ways that I do this, some of you guys know, is I've trained myself to get up in the morning. And so when I get up in the morning, my goal is to hear what God wants to say to me. Okay? Now that's for me individually or for the body of Christ corporately. If he simply just wants me to be present and to hear his heartbeat, then that's my goal. There have been so many days that I go in there and I have tons of questions. I have tons of things I want to know from his word. But I go in there with the mindset of anything you want to say to me is way more important than any question I have because probably the revelation you're going to give me will answer all my questions. All right? Sometimes it's just the time, the repetition of perfect time permanent time with the Lord that's missing from you. Sometimes it's not your ability to hear. It's literally just your practicing permanence of being with Him. That alone would grow your ability. All right? 
And so I'll get up early in the morning. I usually get down on my face. I repent. I clear myself for the day. I tell my soul and my flesh to be quiet, to be still, to be obedient before him. And then I ask him to grow my spirit man and mature it so much that I would leak him out, that I would that my soul and flesh would not be able to contain anything but his light and life everywhere I go. That even if I don't say a word, that the shadow of his glory, my shadow crossing someone would change their life by his presence. Has it happened yet? Well, maybe once or twice, but not the, to the level I want it to. However, while I'm down there, I ask one question every morning. Okay, this is not one of the two fun ways, but it could help. I ask one question every morning. I have taught samurai... To do this. My best friend Jory, who's online, he practices this. We do this. We've talked about it over the years. I ask, Father, what do you want me to write down today? Or another way of saying it, what do you want to talk to me about today? And then I listen. First, I repent and I pray that all things that are from my soul that are from darkness, that are from shame, that are from the enemy would be silenced and removed from the room, from my soul, so that I'm hearing him clearly through the Holy Spirit. And then I listen. And if I don't have peace about what he says, I ask again, this is what I heard. Is that you? Oh, wait, wait, wait. The very first thing I do is I say good morning. Let that sink in. I get up. I repent, I clear myself, and I say, when I'm ready, I say, good morning, Abba Father. And I don't move until he says good morning back. Wait a minute, Ian, are you telling me you'll waste 30 minutes? It's not waste. If I hear the Father tell me good morning back, and I'm clear it's him, do I have to doubt during the day when he speaks to me? Come on, guys, talk to me here. Speak. Put questions and comments. Don't let me just teach on here. I'm giving you ideas, but I want to have a conversation about this. So when I say, good morning, Abba, Father, and I wait until he responds, what is that doing for my senses? Now think about this. It sounds silly, but when I get up in the morning and my kids were little, and they would crawl into bed with me. They'd say, good morning, good morning, Baba. Good morning, Daddy. Good morning, Dada. Tobi always said Dada. Good morning, Dada. What if I didn't say good morning back? What would he think? What would he process? What would he receive from me? He always waited. Good morning, Dada. Good morning, good morning, Bubbers is what I say. Good morning, Bubbers, and I give him a hug, right? Same thing now when he's 17, 16. Good morning, Tobiah, and I wait. Did you hear me? Yeah, well, I didn't hear you take, speak back. Good morning. Now, I don't want to confuse this with I love you. Because when I say, or when God says to you in the morning, he will say this to you, you're mine, Ian. When he says to you, I love you, Ian, He's not up there waiting for you to say I love you back. So don't confuse what I'm saying right now. God does not need you to say I love you back. He desires you to say I love you back, but he doesn't need it. Jesus said, or Paul said, we are to love our bride as Christ loves the church. How does that mean? With no expectation. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross for you despising the shame. What's the shame of us not loving him? He didn't need to hear, we, I love you back. But when I say good morning, Abba, he always says something back to me, always. And if he's silent, I have so much peace in knowing that he's there with me. Or guess what ends up happening? He's training me to say, are, are you there, Abba? And then he responds. He doesn't abandon me. He doesn't leave me forsaken. It may take a minute. Because he may want me to ask something else. But he always says it. These days, it's now, it's, it's Gideon in my life. He comes up to me in the morning, Hey, Baba, you need to cuddle. And he doesn't let me leave until I cuddle him back. So, 
Amy says, this is good stuff. I always need more patience. Slows things down. Yeah. Time, you guys, time is a first world thing. It's not a God thing. Time was invented because Adam and Eve sinned. Right? So we had to be controlled by time. Before that, it was just night and day. Light and dark. End of the day, beginning of the day. Like, they weren't, they weren't pressed for time. Time was in Christ. It was in God. All right? Is focusing your mind totally on the Father? Well, let me ask you. Is that what it is for you guys? Yeah. For me, that's what it is. So hearing the voice of God, guys, begins with us training our senses. Paul said that we will mature in Christ by the, the usage and training of our senses, right? So the first thing in foundation is we have, to, we have to practice, we have to train. But we have to do it properly because practice makes permanent, not perfect. So when I go out every morning, what am I practicing? A permanence of meeting with the Lord. But my, my reasoning isn't because I got to make it through the day. My reasoning is because I can't live without his word. Man doesn't live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. If I'm not going to get that word, how can I live? How can I breathe and have my being? And so when I go in there, it's making a permanence. If I skip a day or two, I'm dry, I'm empty. All right? So many times, whatever that is that you, that you ask God, what do you want to talk about today? What do you want to write down? So many times you'll find that during the day, he's got revelation in the whole world, somewhere in the world that connects with that. A lot of times. Or it's a, it's, it's a way of him maturing you. So what are some fun ways and different ways to hear from God? First, I want to ask you guys, what are some fun and different ways you've trained yourself to hear from God? All right. What are ways you've learned to hear from God? All right. One of the ways that I learn to hear from God is by running, all right? By working out, by running. I've told you this before. I've done it on our, on our missionary family page. I've done some, I've alluded to this a bit, that I like, I, obviously in the morning, but I like to run when my body feels a little bit of suffering. Not when I'm like going super fast, but I like to run at a suffering pace and at those moments invite the Lord in to speak to me because it's separating it's like fasting in my soul it's separating my flesh from my soul sometimes I'll even listen to music while I'm trying to talk to the Lord about these things so that I have to eliminate the other voices to hear his that's one of the fun ways that I do it and it works sometimes, and sometimes I, I, I find myself singing the songs instead, and sometimes he invades that time and really helps me. But that's one of the ways. Um, today, I got a new fun way that I was, I was excited to tell you because I think you could implement it in different ways. It's still running, but check this out. It's not just listening for a revelation. So today, I was running at a little bit higher pace, and... A couple months ago, the Lord broke in. I mean, you know, did you know Jesus loves to work out? He loves to run with you. He loves to write with you. He's a creative God. He created all things. By the word of his mouth, it says that nothing was made by him. Nothing was made that wasn't made through him in John chapter 1. So he created everything. He's a creator. He's an artist, a painter, a singer, a writer, a, he has, his symphony is still going today over you. And so one of the ways that I heard him a few months ago was um, I was I was running a really long run and I was really wanting to quit towards the end. And I heard him say loud and clear because I was talking spiritual things with him. And he said, he said, I'm with you and I'm running with you. I said, whoa, thanks for hanging with me, Lord. And he said, keep this pace. And don't slow down and don't speed up. Lengthen your stride until you finish. And for the last two kilometers, I obeyed him and made it. Peacefully. Today, I was running 
and, and I wasn't hearing a lot from him and I was still wanting to hear him. And so I found myself the last like 20 minutes because it was so hot, maybe last 10 minutes, it was so hot. I was like, Lord, I want to hear your voice, but I'm struggling here because I'm going a little higher pace. And I heard myself say in the spirit, pace me, Holy Spirit, pace me. Jesus, set my pace. And it wasn't even a few minutes later, the Holy Spirit goes, keep this pace right here. Do not speed up. Do not slow down. Keep this pace. So I was keeping it, and I'm like, thanks for pacing me, Holy Spirit. This is awesome. He goes, I'm going to show you a picture. Keep this pace, right? He goes, at the second bridge, look at your watch. You should be met close to five minutes. And I had a seven-minute run left. I, I got to the bridge. I was right at four minutes and 45 seconds. He goes, keep this pace. Don't speed up. Don't slow down. I said, okay. He goes, you're going to go to the last bridge. When you get to the last bridge, you should be done. I got to the last bridge and I was right at seven minutes. I mean like within five seconds, 10 seconds. And so as, so my, my, fi my momentum of the top of the bridge to come down, that five seconds allowed me to slow and come to a stop. And I thought, man, why, what are you trying to teach me here? And it was pacing. But here's what it was. Every minute, every second, every little pace, every little thing, every little step, it was like I was having to tune in to what the Father was going to say next, to what Holy Spirit was going to say next, to what Jesus was going to say next. On the minute, on the minute, on the minute. Right? Now let's, let's take this into you guys for weight training. Let's say you like weight training. You're bench pressing and you say, Father... Or you say, Jesus, pace me. Tell, tell me what you want. So instead of listening to your music and ignoring everybody in the gym, listen for the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, over the next part of the workout, how many reps do you want me to do? How much, how much span of time do you want me to take? Pace me. Train me. And see if you can hear him. It, I promise you it's not just your brain training when you draw, you're blank. Holy Spirit, what do you want me to draw today? Let him show you what to draw. Um, maybe you guys have some other ideas. Let me read you some of the ones you guys wrote. Amy said journaling. So for, for, for Amy, it's journaling. All right. Maybe she has a topic and she's listening. So what are some ways we could help fun in different ways for Amy. Well, maybe there's a way to journal and you use a time element to practice hearing from the Lord. Holy Spirit, what's the next three words you want me to journal in the next minute? And you wait on him. If he doesn't say anything, he didn't want you to write anything for three minutes. Okay, for the next minute, what three words do you want me to write? That testing of your soul to stop and be submitted to your spirit and your spirit to obey is one of the most important things you could be training yourself. Hi, Nicole. Thanks for coming on, girl. My parents said, if we are inside, we can turn off TV or media and find a quiet place to practice here in the Lord. Yep. What's a fun and different way that they could also do it? Once they feel like they're hearing the Lord pretty consistently, Turn the TV back on and then practice it. But submit your spirit to listening and your soul and flesh to not listening to the TV. And practice this. All right? So those are some fun and, and those are some fun and simple ways um, today. So one, I've been for months and months and months and months listening to the Lord, what He wants to speak to me while I'm running. But today he showed me something different that as I couldn't have a full conversation, I could still test my ability to hear him by him saying, ask me to pace you. Okay, Jesus, will you pace me right now? Pace me. I need to run seven minutes and, and I don't know if I can make it seven minutes. Where, where, pace me. And have him test you 
in whatever ability or skill you're, you're using, all right? Whatever time you're taking. But that's a fun way to do it, and I'd love to hear from you afterwards in a couple weeks if that works, all right? Nicole said meditation. All right, so anybody else, what are your thoughts on what I just said about the foundation of training ourselves to hear from God and two, these two fun and different ways that I, I said that I have been able to hear from God. I've got tons more. We'll come on a different time, but what are some of your ideas on this? Jory, talk to me, man. Let's take another couple minutes to let you guys answer because it is pizza night here and we're going to make some pizza and watch a Christmas movie if the power stays on over here. And by the way, these are things I have trained my kids to do. All right, my whole family, everybody. We have a full wall full of things that, that my boys have learned to listen and hear. Major decisions in our life in the mission field have been made by our children and us having peace with it lining up with what we're saying. All right? Learning to hear from the Lord is one of the best, best things you could do in your life because He's longing to hear from you. Anybody else have any comments on those two, two fun ways I talked about? Maybe possibly different ways um, to hear from the Lord, pacing you while you're running? Maybe you're, you're playing music and you want to take 10 minutes every other day to say, Father, what chords do you want me to play? What notes do you want to, what do you want to say in my hands right now? I'll listen. And when he says to hit the E chord, you hit it. Why? Because he wants you to play an E? No, he wants, you to, he wants to give you what you asked for, which was to learn to hear his voice. All right? Amy says, yes, I just need more silence. Be more careful about voices I'm listening to. That's it. And guys, what does Jesus say about this, Amy? My sheep know my voice. My sheep know. Hear my voice and another's they do not follow. Why? Because the shepherd calls out to the sheep daily, hourly. And so when another voice happens, they don't know another voice. They only know the one. My mom and dad said, I hear the Lord saying a key is training to hear him regularly and daily. Amen. I think in this season, that's what God's calling us to do. You know, the, uh, the Bethlehem star came out recently. I guess it hasn't happened in 800 years. My guess is that 800 years before that would be 1,600 years, and 800 years before that would be pretty close to when Jesus was born. So we're going on one, two, three times that that's ever happened. All right? My guess is that stuff's happening, and God wants us to hear his voice. We're in a generation that he wants us to hear his voice. Amy said she's praying he doesn't ask me to start running. Wow. Okay. That is hilarious. Although your man's been running a bit in the last year. So maybe this is a way for him to be able to learn to hear from the Lord. All right. My mom and dad said he needs to ask him what he wants him to write instead of what I want to write. That's really good. Amy said frustrated with myself that my default is still to look externally for different messages or better news instead of quieting down listening. Hey, that, you guys, that's the challenge in America, Europe, England, those places, because we've trained ourselves with the resources you have with technology to train us. And that's not what God ever wanted. He always wanted us to hear his voice first. And so if you'll honestly, if you'll just take the time, if you'll, you'll start a habit, even if it's five minutes a day, to practice hearing his voice, I promise you, and if you do it for the right motive, which is you love God and want to hear Him and desire, you believe He wants you to hear Him, that five minutes will turn into seven. That seven will turn into ten. And it'll turn into a hunger that's insatiable, and you won't even, the other stuff will melt away. Amen, Stephen Vanderland. All right. Man, you guys are awesome. Thanks for engaging on this. This is great. Obviously, you guys are liking it. Um, I hope you guys got to see that testimony um, of, of our new friend that literally had God encounter him uh, the other day, had Jesus come into his room and, and touch his forehead. It was amazing. Um, right now we have our first YOM outreach team here and they are doing amazing. The, the guys are helping disciple. 
And so we're teaching them to hear from God too. They're teaching the villagers to hear from God. And so this is, this is the main thing that we're teaching people in the mission field is to try to hear the voice of God. Because at the end of the day, if you don't have technology, you don't have those things that can feed you, you need to hear the voice of God. Um, if you can't read, if you can't write, at the end of the day, you need to be able to hear the voice of God. If you have the resources, you have the technology that can take you away from the voice of God, you need to hear the voice of God. And so it's the number, it's the number one thing that Jesus talked about too. He said, to those that have ears to hear, he said, this passage has been fulfilled today in your hearing. For those that hear and persevere till the end, right? It's the biggest thing. And the Father has been calling out generation just to hear you. And He wants you to hear. He wants to hear your voice. He wants your kids to hear your voice. All right? Love you guys. I'm going to give you 30 more seconds. If you have a question of any kind about this, go ahead and shoot them down there. But if you enjoy this content, if you enjoy this topic, when I post this to YouTube, please um, like and subscribe and hit the bell and you'll be able to know when the, the next uh, video of this type of content comes up. But I'm hoping to do a little bit more beyond the music stuff like this of hearing the voice of God to help encourage you guys in these, these, um, these, these dark times for you guys to be the light of the world. All right? For you guys to be the light of the world. All right. Amen. Love you guys. This dialogue can continue on YouTube when it gets posted. So if you're not getting the finish, don't sweat it. Love you guys. Bye.